by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap? Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for His Worship the Mayor. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to tonight's Ordinary Council meeting. For the 27th of April 2021, I open the meeting at one minute past seven. And I call for apologies, but I do have Councillor Strott and Councillor Bryan. We do have Councillor Tame and Councillor Coppins on Zoom. I believe that should be anybody. everybody. Is there any other apologies for tonight's meeting? No, then that's, uh, we move on to the confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting held on the 23rd of March 2021 be confirmed as a true and accurate record of proceedings. Councillor Smallwood-Smith. So moved. Moved by Councillor Smallwood Smith. I presume you don't wish to speak. Does the motion or attempted motion find a seconder? Councillor Onyazans. Don't wish to speak. 
Councillor Onyzan seconds the motion. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak, comment or question on the said minutes before us? If not, then I'll put those. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. Councillors, we will now move on to the adjourned business item. So this was the item that you may recall from last meeting that was asked to be adjourned. You will note that it's listed under motions on notice, but as an adjourned business item, we must pick up from where we left off and we bring that item forward now. So this is in relation, and this is under, in accordance with section 19 of the Local Government Act Procedures at Meetings Regulations of 2013. So to remind councillors, it's the item 13.1 listed in your agenda on page seven, which is the motion in relation to the McGilp uh, Recreation Park development and the principal petition. So I need to remind elected members that this is a motion that we're picking up from the last meeting. So it was moved and seconded by Councillor Kerrison and Councillor Arifi. Those that have already spoken to the motion are Councillor Baker, Ryan, Halls, Rentoulis and Craig. And I do have a note that Councillor Smallwood-Smith asked a question, but has not spoken on the item. So normal meeting procedures will apply. Um, so those of you that have already spoken are unable to. Uh, and Councillor Kerrison does have the right to close the debate if he so wishes. So we now go straight into that item, so it's on the screen, and we pick up from where we've left off in relation to the item. Are there any councillors wishing to speak to the item? Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Yes, thank you. And just to say that uh, um, thank you very much to Councillor Kerrison for forwarding on the petition, uh, which I note, and um, as I always say, I noticed there was a few people from outside of the council area, but nevertheless, um, 500 odd um, signatories is a very good effort by Councillor Kerrison, and um, I'm more than happy to actually uh, vote now for the motion. Thank you, Councillor Smalls. With Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks. I'd like to just um, echo the the efforts that the fellow councillor um, put in to, to door knock and do a lot of his uh, engagements throughout the the area. I think it's a perfect opportunity when we've got a particular electorate that has uh, millions of dollars being thrown at it um, currently at, at the moment, and, and hopefully if we can leverage um, some of that state funding and a commitment, um, delivering some 50% um, of of the funding, I think would be a significant benefit um, to to this uh, community. Community, but also if we can deliver the project in whole instead of a staged approach, there would be a better return for us, um, especially to the sporting body um, of, of the community up there. So I definitely will uh, support and well done on uh, your efforts um, in, in elevating this. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Coppins has his uh, hand up. Councillor Coppins. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've just got a couple of questions in relation to this. I'm, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to support the motion. Uh, I'm just wondering we're, we're we're pursuing half the funding from the state government via Paula Leeson. Uh, where is number one? Is, where where are the additional funds coming from? The the extra fifty percent, and what proposed time frame are we looking at to um, to uh, get this work, this, these works completed. I'll, I'll hand that uh, over to Mr Green. Mr Green. Uh, thank you, through the Mayor. Uh, Councillor, um, as you would be aware, uh, we do have some money in our draft annual business plan to support um, the Council's contribution towards this project. Um, so I think that answers the question about where would the funds come from. In terms of time frames, those time frames are, I guess, yet to be fully uh, determined, but we would be looking to get on with it fairly quickly if we were successful in receiving additional funding. Uh, and if the funding did come through a grant program, they normally have timelines associated with them to be delivered, so we would need to, to uh, adhere to those timelines. Thank you. Are there any, any other comments or debate from you, Councillor Coppins? I'm taking that as a no as the hand's now gone down. Are there any other councillors wishing to make a comment or debate? If not, then Councillor Kerrison has the right to close if he wishes. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, firstly, look, thank you for everyone's support. Um, everyone's uh, been really um, supportive of, in this process, so thank you to fellow councillors who've uh, worked with me on this one. Um, also, um, there's comment about the out of area signatures, and there is a number, and I'd just like to say a couple of words on that. Um, 
a couple of those out of error signatures I've actually spoken to face to face. Um, one, of the, one of them is a lady who actually grew up in the area, her family's been in the area since the 1840s. Um, she's moved to Gawla, um, but her children uh, come to the One Shore Primary School, so she tries to keep that local connection. Um, another, another gentleman is a member of the uh, Cricket Club, been a member of the Cricket Club for many, many years. Um, lived in the local area but now lives at Tanunda. So I think it's really important that all those signatures that aren't necessarily local were gained in the local community and they generally have a very strong connection to the area. Um, also a lot of those signatures that weren't necessarily One Tree Hill signatures were there were some from Elizabeth Downs, Manapara West, etc. Um, a lot of those people have students that go to the school and desperately want to see an upgrade for the car parking, the oval. Um, so many many of those parents drop their kids at school uh, to save the dangers of the um, crossing the road. They actually walk, walk along the oval to the crossing um, and during the winter it gets flooded, they get wet feet, etc, etc. So uh, I think it, this upgrade serves the council, the community, it also serves the local school, and I think it's only fair that the state government comes to the table with that, uh, those funds. Uh, so look, hopefully we can all support that tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerrison. I'll put the motion that's before us. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Thank you, Councillor Kerrison. All right, councillors. Just for the councillor, yeah, Councillor Kerrison's gonna hand the petition, just pass it to government. But thank you, Councillor Kerrison, for that. Wait till you resume your seat and we'll continue on. Councillors now move to item three, declarations of interest. Are there any? Councillor Rantoulis. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to declare a perceived conflict of interest in relation to item 14.16, community development and event grant. Um, the reason there's a perceived conflict of interest is that I'm a committee member of the Virginia Residents Action Group. The Virginia Residents Action Group has lodged an application for funding and uh, has been successful. Uh, the uh, conflict is indirect and personal. I will deal with the, the conflict by leaving the, the meeting, uh, which means that I won't engage in any debate or discussion and I won't, um, I won't vote on, on the matter. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rentoulis. Are there any other declarations? If not, we'll move on to item four, Mayor's report. As we have quite a large agenda tonight, I won't go through all the items, but wish to say it was fantastic to have um, so many of the elected members and community present, both for the Anzac Eve Vigil and also for the Dawn Service at the Smithfield Memorial Gardens. As always, a very solemn and reflective service on both occasions. It was wonderful to see so many young people engaged in the vigil uh, and the concept of Anzac vigils across the state uh, is about 20 years old this year. Um, so it's fantastic to see that our community is increasing in relation to that, uh, that item. Uh, it was also quite sad to attend Maisie Lawrence's funeral. Uh, many of you would know Maisie, a 102 year old lovely lady, who a um, very energetic lady that's been uh, one of the founding original members around the uh, Grenville Centre, Grenville Hub. Um, and she passed away this week at 102. Um, and it was quite sad to see, but Maisie, as many of you would know, uh, was out and about always and uh, absolutely love the Grenville Centre. So it was great that we were able to celebrate her life with a number of the Grenville Centre patrons uh, over the week. And likewise, also Harry Watson's 101st birthday celebration, where Harry wanted to have his birthday on Fish and Chip Friday at the Grenville Centre um, as well. So it was fantastic to attend those. A number of other items are up uh, on the screen um, and they're there to read at your leisure. So we move on to item five, reports of representatives of council on other organisations. Are there any? No reports by councillors. Anyone wish to speak? Councillor Smallsmith. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, um, Mr Mayor. I, I'd like to uh, just focus on ANZAC. Um, I'd like to uh, pay a huge tribute to the staff, uh, the 
Council's civic events team and in special uh, mention of Suzanne Malbert and Chloe Camilleri for the fantastic job they did with the organisation. I'd also like to make mention of the Girl Guides, the Boy Scouts, St John Cadets, the Pathfinder Cadets and to the CFS Cadets. This is the first year we've used them and um, they were there and they were uh, looking after the cross all night and I think that the youth uh, were very well disciplined and it was just a fantastic event and it made me very proud of the youth of Playford. We hear so many bad things about young people these days and here we have an enormous group there who were there overnight and did um, great justice to the uh, looking after the Anzac Memorial. And um, of course, the dawn service was spectacular. We had um, London foreman uh, singing on the vigil. Excuse me if I lose my voice here. And we had Rachel Leocar the following morning and uh, she sang all three anthems, which was just fantastic. It was great to see so many elected members there. Uh, we haven't had that for a number of years and it was it was really fantastic. And the weather couldn't have been any kinder. So a very, very successful Anzac uh, couple of events there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smallsmith. Councillor Halls. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd just like to add on um, to mine um, a visit to the Midway Community um, House uh, Wednesday Markets um, where they were raising funds, which is really good for them. They do a lot of uh, business there, considering COVID has hit them pretty hard. Um, the Open Day Trinity College Blakeview and the Central Districts versus Adelaide Football and the Mamma Mia Shedley Theatre and where it says Eastern Park Football Club, that was their um, their open day on the Sunday. Next one down, yeah. Thank you. And I'll just uh, echo Councillor Smallwood-Smith's um, uh, words about um, the vigil and the, um, the dawn service. It was really quite lovely. Um, <clears throat> and as I was leaving um, after breakfast, I was stopped by a gentleman that I went to see last year who had a dawn service at his own front yard. And um, he'd actually, he's actually painted a stoby pole in his street opposite his house now, and the big flag's still on the uh, roller doors um, for Anzac, which was really quite nice. But he did come to our service, which was really good. Thank you, Councillor Halls. Councillor Mark. Thanks, uh, Mayor Doherty. Um, I'd like to just um, pass on the, the appreciation to the Deputy Mayor for uh, co-hosting a, uh, a community uh, meeting in, in Anglevale and the support um, by Katrina Strowett um, for, for attending um, the, the, the meeting there held at the Gawler River St Columbia College, um, where we took the time for a good two hours to really engage with our, our community in the growth areas and sort of take on the role of clearing some um, mistruths or misunderstanding um, that, that the residents currently have in regards to what growth deeds are all about, how are infrastructure rolled out, is it related to uh, rates, um, rate rises, why isn't there um, infrastructure coming out beforehand, but the history um, as well of the City of Playford as, uh, as sort of um, Councillor Baker has been informing me on how, how we've been going and how we've been expanding. The, the night was actually uh, quite um, respective. Um, we were able to, to clear the, the airways quite reasonably. Um, we, we, we openly said more could be done by, by the state government, but ultimately it's the state government that need to come forward. So the, the community were quite um, respectful and actually happy um, for, for such a meeting to, to be held. They, they just want to be engaged, they want to be listened to, and they want the correct information to come out to, to them. So they're obviously continuing to uh, email the, the, the ministers, John Gardner and Corey Wingard, um, with unfortunately the same response being sent back to every single constituent cut and paste. The only difference to it is a reference number and their first name. So quite disappointing that it's not very personal, um, personal message coming back to them. Um, but um, what I would like to say as well is thanks to Corey, 
Corey Wingard in actually organising a meeting with DIT, um, the, the Deputy Mayor and myself sat there for about an hour and a half in Angvale and sat down with staff there at, as the, with the department and they are really listening to, to the efforts of the administration and what we are doing as a, as a chamber. So I think we're doing an incredible job as a chamber and the administration are doing very well with their, I think, bi-monthly uh, meetings with the department. So thank you. Councillor Coppins. Thank you, Worship. Um, I just want to echo again Councillor Smallwood-Smith and also Councillor Halls in relation to Anzac Day. Um, I also attended the overnight vigil. I also attended the, uh, obviously, the dawn service. And I'd really like to commend our community as a whole for such a really good turnout. It was a fabulous service and staff did really, really well to, again, pull it all together and, and make it happen. But it was really fabulous to, again, see a really good turnout of our community uh, commemorating the Andex, um, the, uh, the loss of uh, the soldiers that didn't come home and, and respecting the... Uh, the uh, both the current and the former serving um, forces personnel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cobbins. Councillor Rentals. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll, I'll be very quick. Um, echoing the sentiments uh, of uh, councillors that have already spoken, yes, the, the vigil in relation to Anzac Day and the, the dawn service, as always, a, a beautiful, sombre affair. Uh, what was abundantly clear is that um, COVID is not going to, to stop uh, this community from honouring um, its, its uh, soldiers, uh, members of the community that have given, have, the, have paid the ultimate sacrifice to, to serve this, this country. And uh, I was fortunate enough to attend the, um, the dawn service at the Elizabeth RSL. There would have been anywhere between 500 and 1,000 people there. Um, that's my... Uh, honest uh, guess there, um, and uh, yeah, very well attended by uh, people just outside the area as well, just coming out out the front of, of their, their their property. Um, the other thing that I just want to mention, just very quickly in passing, uh, the official turning of the sod of the Wyndham Playford Hotel. That um, that's certainly a milestone. It's it's something that I. I to be quite honest, I wasn't sure was was going to happen. I'm glad it's happened, and uh, this this council has has supported uh, that development right from uh, day dot, including the the previous council. Um, it's it's good to see construction now um, on the the precip precipice of, of commencing. Thank you. Okay, thank you, councillors. We move on to item seven reports of representatives' conferences and training programs. I don't believe there are any. Item eight, questions without notice. Are there any questions? Councillor Tang. Thank you. I just wanted to um, find out, could I please have an update from the council with creating a section 41 for the access and inclusion committee? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Tame, um, we are considering uh, all of our advisory groups and all of our committees as part of a review that we're currently working on as an administration and would anticipate bringing that to the council in the next couple of months to uh, work through with you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. If there's no other questions, Councillor Tame, I presume you want your question and the accompanying response recorded in the minutes? Yes, so we'll move that by Councillor Tame. Does it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Marsh. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Marsh? No. Any other councillor wishing to speak? And if not, then I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. Uh, questions on notice is nil. Petitions is nil. Councillors, we move to item 11, deputation representation. Uh, deputation has come in uh, on Friday in relation to the Gould Creek Battery BES or BSS development, um, and Mr. William McLean would like to speak with us this evening. So I ask if he could come forward, please, to the podium. Yeah. 
Mr McLean, you've got uh, five minutes for your deputation. Um, at the four minute mark, you'll get a warning uh, from me, letting you know that you have one minute left. Um, please press the button when you're ready to start, the red button. Your time will start when you start speaking at the conclusion of your presentation. If you could remain at the podium, as there may or may not be questions uh, from the floor. And we're over to you. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening, councillors. Mayor, thanks for having me in tonight. I won't take up too much of your time, obviously. Five minutes, to be exact. Um, I'm from a company called Maoneng. Contrary to the name, uh, it's an Australian-owned company that reflects the heritage of two uh, of the directors. They both grew, were born in China and came over. I've been with the company for just over a year. I'm accompanied by Sharon and Alison. Alison's another member of our uh, development team. She's the director of uh, renewable asset development. And Sharon is a grid connections manager from the engineering team. I'm just gonna run you through um, our company, a very high level summary of what we're about. Um, we started off in uh, the solar industry. We started off with a small solar, um, a small solar farm development, excuse me, in Canberra called Mugger Lane. Um, it's quite successful in uh, impacting the renewable sector in Canberra. And then we moved on to Sunraysia Solar Farm, which is a much larger asset located on the New South Wales Victoria project. Uh, I'm going to skip through this, sorry. I'm going to go through the slides fairly, fairly quickly because I've only got the five minutes, so please, uh, as many questions as you need at the end. Um, the Sunraysia Solar Farm is 250 megawatts. It is, that's the size of it. Um, it supplies power to about 50,000 homes. I've used this picture because the battery development that we're looking at putting in at Gould Creek is a similar size to the white rectangle to the south. So by no means is the development that we're looking at doing at Gould Creek a similar size to that solar farm. It will be nowhere near that. Um, we work with a variety of investors financially um, and EPC contractors and suppliers from Europe, Asia, um, and we've conducted consultation work with GHD based in Adelaide. The reason that this battery is um, wanting to go ahead in Gould Creek is because of the renewables being inserted into the national electricity network. Um, state to state, it's all going in the same direction. The coal-fired power plants that are being slowly taken out of the network are being replaced by uh, wind and solar and other renewable sources of electricity generation. The reason for batteries is that this creates a safety net to the unreliable nature of that power generation. Obviously, um, simply, the coal-fired power plants are very reliable. You can turn them off, turn them up, turn them down as you please. Wind and solar obviously don't work like that. The energy comes in a surplus and deficit depending on how far, how much sun is out and how, man, how much wind is blowing. Um, Okay, the Gould Creek Battery Energy Storage System is located at 447 Blacktop Road. Um, it fronts Willison Road and is dire uh, directly adjacent to and to the north of the Para substation. You can just see the northern end of the sub substation there. Um, the best footprint will be roughly 2.5 to 3 hectares as a whole. About 2.5 hectares of actual batteries and half a hectare of at very small substation and maintenance buildings. The blue lines you can see running through the diagram are existing transmission routes. So this property has been affected in the past by the substation. However, it's not a deal breaker for this development. This is a visual provided by GHD, our consultant. Um, we have conducted a land visual impact assessment because we think that One minute. based on where it's located, this will be the major um, or the, the most possible impact. We've got a natural vegetation full of natives planned for, to go around the battery um, and other, other um, what's the word, sorry, it escapes me. Other impacts such as noise we don't think will be uh, 
a very big impact due to the receivers being over a kilometre away, the closest ones. That's what it looks like from an aerial view, including the existing transmission lines. And these are the views from Willison Road. The battery will be located underneath the white line. Thank you. You've got three seconds, but I think we'll ask a few questions, so we'll be all right there. Yep, all right. Councillors, we'll hand over to you. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Craig. Um, yeah, my question is, uh, is it uh, private land or is it? More it's bad? private land. We've secured it under a call option, uh, which is um, the landowner relinquishes the right to sell to anyone else within a given amount of time. In this case, it's three years, 36 months. Um, and within that time, we can progress the DA to a stage where we uh, are comfortable purchasing the property as a whole, and that's when the title will change from their hands to ours. Councillor Rental Wills. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks for the presentation, quite informative. What is the, what is the purpose of your presentation tonight, other than to inform? Is it something that you're asking for, that you're wanting? From no, council? So good question. We've received Crown sponsorship from the state government. Um, I wanted to come in here today, along with other members of the team, just to show you what is happening in the area, what is what might be happening in the area, uh, and receive your questions and provide as much information as we can, and allow the forum for ongoing discussions between uh, local community members, councillors, and our business. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so just a, a further follow-up question. So how does the business operate? How do you, so you're going to supply energy to the local South Australian market or who do you intend to supply energy to? Yes, yeah, so the battery will take energy off the grid at a, specific, at a particular spot price where there's too much energy, like in a surplus. That energy will be stored until a peak time later that day and then it's put back into the um, network at another spot price, which is of course going to be higher because it's a peak time. That's how these batteries make money. Sure. And uh, the company, do you say uh, they're Chinese directors or Australian directors? What's the, the background to the company? The two directors were born in China to the age of four and five, then moved over and grew up here. One of the directors' names or middle name is Mao, and that's where the name comes from. Um, the, the name reflects Chinese heritage, um, but by no means reflects Chinese ownership. All right, thank you. Councillor Baker. How, uh, how far along is the development application and the, uh, it was the plans lodged, made to? It was lodged? It was lodged in late March. Um, it's my understanding that after having a discussion with GHD today, who lodged it on our behalf, there was a slight change in um, legislation, which the only, the only change that affects developers was a significant price increase for, uh, as a lodgement fee, as a Crown sponsorship lodgement fee. We got it in before that, and as such, there was a backlog of developers lodging a variety of other projects at the same time. As such, the DA process has been pushed back a week or two, um, but as I said, it was lodged in late March. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kerris. Yeah, well, thank you for the presentation, and I think, um, obviously, I, I support um, the battery backups and uh, that sort of thing, but my concern there is that's in the hills face zone. Um, can you sort of explain to me how this development's going to progress in the hills face zone? Yes, sure. Um, that was one of the, um, not barriers, but hiccups we thought we may come across. After speaking with the Department of Energy and Mining, getting their opinion on what would be allowed and what won't be, um, we got their support from Crown sponsorship based on the fact that a battery energy storage system would be allowed within a hills face zone. Now, I'm not, oh, I'm very familiar with the um, zoning regulations and the, the fine print surrounding those, so I probably won't be able to give you enough detail in this answer. But as far as they're concerned, through the conversations that we've had with them, including in meeting this morning um, in, in their office, um, they are fairly confident that there will be support for a battery energy storage system in this hills face zone. Yeah, and look, I, I think we've got a great uh, power network and the thing with the power is it can be transported from location to location. So um, my understanding is where the battery storage is isn't necessarily critical. 
Um, so can you give me some understanding on why does it need to be that location sure. and what's the benefits to it? Again, I hope that I can give you some information for this question, but I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'll do my best. Um, as far as I know, that para substation has significant capacity, over a gigawatt of capacity for more electricity to run through it. That means that it only ever runs at about 56% of the, the electricity running through the lines. As such, energy that is lost from a full substation running full amounts of energy through their lines will always have a marginal loss factor. So it won't be as efficient. It's an, it, that para substation is a very efficient substation in its current state. Um, it also has five 275 kV kilovolt uh, lines running through it. Quite rare for a substation this close to Adelaide to have that much high voltage running through it. Um, a, a lot of the load is used by the northern suburbs area. Of course, that's hard to measure because it's a state network. Um, there's no dividing of energy based on um, hard numbers. It, all, it goes where it needs to go. So from an engineering point of view, the efficiency of this substation, coupled with a land point of view, where I know the hill space zone does provide some sort of gray area around what's allowed and what's not, um, but there's very limited vegetation. It's quite flat of undulating block, um, and there's very limited endangered species and complications from that point of view as well. Councillor Tang, who's just on our Zoom. Sure. Councillor Tang. Thank you. I just wanted to find out, um, have you had the local community feedback um, just in regards to it being um, on the site and um, if you have, what are their, um, what's their feedback? No, so we haven't. This council meeting uh, presentation triggers the beginning of our con community consultation process. We are very early in the DA pro uh, proposal and take a transparent community consultation process quite seriously when it comes to these batteries. Albeit South Australia is quite familiar with these, but we understand that in these semi-rural communities, uh, lots of people will not know much about these batteries. So there will be from today onwards quite a significant community consultation process. I don't have any further details on that as nothing um, too much has occurred yet. Yep. And then also, I just wanted to find out, so how does it work in regards to the, the actual um, the buyback and, and the actual generation of, of the battery? Um, I know similar, like, with, you know, the test batteries and everything, it gets stored. So with the, the power, are you going to have it um, buying back to our network? Or, um, yeah, I just want to know where is that money? Going to is it going to the community or is it going to an individual company to yeah. offset or yeah I just want to know a bit more about that. Sure. So the ownership structure of the asset, whatever that may be, has not been decided yet. We in the past have owned uh, ninety to one hundred percent of an asset, and we've also owned ten percent of an asset um, shared with the other financial contributor to a project. Um, I say that because the purchase and selling of energy at spot prices um, is reflected by, it goes into, so sorry, I'll start again. We buy energy at a spot price when there's a surplus of energy in the market. We sell energy later that day, most of the time, when there's a, def when there's a um, uh, deficit of energy in the market. So the price will be higher. That, and it, that the difference between those two prices will then go back the, to the whoever has the ownership of the asset. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gossink. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a quick question. I live really close to this location. Um, so can you, and I know you showed us an example of um, where a larger scale um, project has operated, but are there any similar types of existing projects in, in um, uh, peri-urban area locations and so across Australia? No, there's only projects like this in the works in close to, um, very close to receivers. 
the only one I know of, which is on a different scale, it's only 30 megawatts as opposed to 225 megawatts, which is what this will be, um, is in Ballarat. In Ballarat? That's within 100 metres of the nearest receiver. Right. Um, Alison, head of development, has visited that. It is hard to gauge from a visual and a noise perspective how that translates to a battery of this size. This battery is similar to size to the one at Hornsdale, so its noise and visual, no, its noise output will be similar. But from a visual perspective, Hornsdale's very exposed, obviously. It's flat land. Uh, I'm not familiar with how close the receivers are there, but we, the closest thing to this battery uh, size that's close to receivers is a Mornington battery, which is also in the works from our company. It's located on the Mornington Peninsula and is slightly more progressed than this project and within 100 metres of the nearest receiver. Right. We're conducting the noise assessment at the moment. Right, the that was my next question. Yes. I, you mentioned noise, which I didn't realise there was noise associated. The air conditioning unit to cool these machines is the biggest one. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a low hum, like any air conditioning machine. I'm not familiar with exact decibels right. or the requirements surrounding those. Our engineering team would be more across that, and I'm more than happy to provide some information on that once we know it. But considering the progress that the one in Mornington has made, um, I would assume that noise output levels when this has the nearest receiver over a kilometre away won't be an issue. Okay, great. That would be good to find out more information sure, about that. Thank you. Are there any other questions from councillors? If not, then thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, thank you for, um, on behalf of the council, actually coming to let us know. Normally we find out about these things through Gazette, so thank you for actually coming forward. Thank you. Councillors, we move on to item 12, motions without notice. Are there any motions? No, then we move on to item 13, motions on notice. Obviously 13, one we've already dealt with councillors. Uh, in relation to the adjourned item under section 19 of the Local Government Act. We move to item 13.2, motion on notice, Humbug Scrub Road. Councillor Kerrison. Yeah, th thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, motion on notice before us there tonight, um, that the Mayor writes to Corey Wingard, the Minister for Transport and Infrastructure, supporting the reduction of the speed limit for Humbug Scrub Road from 100 km per hour to 80 km per hour, inviting Corey Wingard to meet council and residents at Humbug Scrub Road to address the road conditions and resident safety concerns, that the road conditions and speed limits be compared to other local roads for consistency um, and seeking further investigation for improved safety along Humbug Scrub Road. Can we just speak to that? Uh, yes, please. Um, I've only recently been contacted by residents um, regarding their concerns. Uh, Humbug Scrub Road uh, many years ago was a quieter road, um, but with the sealing of the road past the National Park to Cockatoo Valley uh, connecting Williamstown, there's been a significant increase in traffic. Um, when you go there and look at the road, um, I struggle to see how Gawler One Tree Hill Road is 80, and then you go to Humbug Scrub Road, which is significantly tighter, um, has more is more impeded by safety concerns, yet it's still 100 kilometres per hour. Uh, Paula Leuven, the MP for King, has previously taken up this, uh, made Facebook posts, uh, written to the ministers, but still there's been no action. Um, so residents are still on the go. I would like to support the residents and have Corey Wingard come out there, address it, and revise that speed limit. Um, and I think it's the right thing to do. Um, as I said, I've been out there, standing on the road, um, seen people trying to get out of driveways which are pretty much blind. Um, when you get there and you're actually on the road, it's really quite concerning. Thank you, Councillor Kerrison. Councillor Rufi, are you seconding the motion? Uh, yes, I'm happy to second the, the, the motion. Um, I do have a question to ask to staff. Mm -hmm. um, has Council previously received any requests from uh, uh, residents to... Um, uh, seek uh, a review of this, you know, reducing the speed limit. Uh, have we have we raised this previously on behalf of residents? Uh, Mr. Green or Mr. Welsh? <coughs> Mr. Welsh? Uh, through the Mayor, um, I can't answer that question, unfortunately, Councillor, but I can certainly find that out and provide a response back. Thank you. 
Um, Mr. Mayor, may I just suggest a uh, an slight alteration um, to the mover, um, the first dot point supporting the reduction of speed limit for uh, Humpback Scrub Road and request for a review of the speed limit rather than uh, suggesting uh, from you know 100 to 180 uh, reduction given that uh, councillor Kerrison has suggested that the road is tighter uh, and uh, uh, um, I, I think that uh, once uh, an investigation is done they might suggest a uh, a lower speed limit could that be if if the mover is happy to incorporate that i'll allow it if not as you're the seconder you won't be able to move an amendment to it because it hasn't technically hit the floor with the second but councillor kerrison wishes to make that alteration he can if not then we'll just uh, have to see if somebody else wishes to make that as an amendment but it's up to councillor kerrison councillor kerrison i'll give you the call to make that decision Look, I'm happy to support that because I think the other parts cover it off. Um, we're seeking further investigation to improve safety. Um, I think I'm happy with the speed limit, but I'm happy to accept that and uh, see where we go with it. So. Well, I'm taking it leave as granted as no one's objecting, and as it's only the mover and seconder, we do have a plenty of opportunity to debate that, so we'll just make sure we'll substitute the relevant words in, and then once everyone's clear on what they are, we will then open it up for a debate. Yeah. And just, we're just making a slight mention to the potential minutes. All right, councillors, so we have that uh, there. So it's the review of the speed limit of Hubbunk Scrub Road and all the other items are still the same. So I'll open it up for discussion or debate. Councillor Marsh. Thanks, like, can I just, um, what's the administration's uh, current position um, on, on this? Have they done any investigations um, over, over time at, at all with this, with this speed? Um, Mr. Warren. Through Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, our staff have advised me that in very general terms we're um, fairly supportive of what's being uh, proposed in this motion um, and seems to be consistent with the way that other roads of a similar nature are treated uh, throughout that area. So um, in a very general sense um, we're comfortable uh, with what's being proposed and, and believe that it will probably get a, a good hearing from the department as well. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Smallsmith. Uh, yes, I just want to query what it says. It's got Councillor Kerrison with the consent of Councillor Arifi. I thought it was the other way around, that Councillor Arifi sought and was granted leave to bury the motion. That, that's what happened, but in terms of the meeting procedure, and I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but what I'm gathering from the, from the minute taker and governance is by definition, only the mover can technically get a variance in relation to the motion. And I'll, I'll hand over to Ms Reichstein if I've, if I've mislaid any of the local government um, regulation around that, but I'll hand it over to her. But that's, uh, that's the advice I generally believe is, is correct. So I'll hand over to Ms Reichstein. The Mayor is correct. Um, under the regulations uh, which are included in your, our code of practice, only the mover of a motion can request a variation. So in practice, we have Councillor Arifi ask for variation, but technically that's why I asked Councillor Kerrison if he's happy with that, he said yes. So he then becomes the actual variant of the consent. It's just the way it works out. But we know that to get that, you've got to have someone ask for it, but that's the way it will read in the minute. Either way, the variation was accepted by Councillor Kerrison, so it doesn't alter what we're doing. It still has the intent that Councillor Reefy sought, agreed to by the mover, which was Councillor Kerrison, and the items there. It's just the way that the Local Government Act likes uh, it recorded as such. But people do have the video that they can review if they, if 
they so wish to. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then Councillor Kerrison has the right to close if he wishes. Thank you. Just, just one thing I want to make clear that this is actually a dip road as well. It's not actually council road. So, um, uh, as I said, uh, it's been taken up with the uh, member for King previously. Um, action hasn't been addressed. Uh, residents have been in contact with um, uh, the member or proposed new candidate for um, Schubert um, to take it up. And I think we need to support that as well on behalf of residents. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We have the motion that's before us, so I will put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We go down to committee reports and we go on to item 14.1, revocation of the risk management policy and attachments. Somebody wish to move that way? Councillor Halls. Your Worship, are we allowed to move these uh, in a block rather than go through each one from 14.1 to 14.13? Um, Councillor Wall, as long as it's a lawful motion, yes, there isn't anything stopping you. I'd argue for good governance, probably not the best idea in relation to reviewing our policy from the ICAC Commissioner that we probably should have, or the members have the right to go through it one at a time, but if a properly constructed lawful motion comes before me and it's moved and seconded, I can't not accept it, but my, my strong advice without leading from the Chair would be it probably would be better governance and I can get some clarification from the CEO if we technically went one at a time, but I'm in your hands. But Mr Green, any comment? Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Halls, I, I recognise the, uh, the thought process behind perhaps moving these on block. Um, however, uh, I do concur with the Mayor that um, from a governance perspective, um, it is better governance that the council be considering each item individually. And it may be that an item in here requires further debate, maybe even some sort of suggested um, changes. So uh, in that respect, it's it's better to deal with them one by one. I move 14.1. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Do you wish to speak on that? The final seconder. Seconded by Councillor Small and Smith. Councillor Small and Smith, do you wish to speak? That's a no. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put the motion that is before us. All those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Move to item 14.2, revocation of the Open Space Trust Fund expenditure policy uh, and attachments. Yeah. Councillor Marsh. Happy to move the committee recommendation, thank you. Do you wish to speak to that? No, thanks. Find a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Halls. Thank you. I can take it Councillor Halls doesn't wish to speak. Then, is there any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 14.3, the revocation of the Community Emergency Management Policy and attachments on page 61. Councillor Arifi? Yes, happy to move the committee recommendation, thanks. Wish to speak to that? No. Seconded by Councillor Norris, do you wish to speak to that? No, thank you. No. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I will put that motion that's before us. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 14.4, Circus Policy Review and, atta and Attachments on page 115. Councillor Smallsmith. Move the recommendation from the committee. Moved by Councillor Smallsmith, seconded by Councillor Baker. Second. I presume Councillor Baker doesn't wish to speak. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 14.5, Community Development Grant Policy and Attachments on page 118. Councillor Marsh. Happy to move the committee recommendation. Moved by Councillor Marsh that the find a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Arifi. Yeah, happy to second that. Do you wish to speak? No, thanks. No. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Uh, well, can I, I, I'm pretty sure he did, but, um, but I, I've taken it as carried, so um, I will remind councillors to keep your hands up nice and clear so everybody can see, but uh, we'll continue on. That item is carried. We move to item 14.6, the revocation of curbside waste collection policy. Councillor Halls. I move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Does it find a seconder? Happy to second that. Councillor Arifi, do you wish to speak? No, thanks. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? 
I declare that carried. Move to item 14.7, the revocation of third party advertising policy on page 155. Move Councillor for Smith. Moved by Councillor Smallwood Smith, seconded by Councillor Onyazans. We are happy to second that. Thank you. Committee, rec uh, committee recommendation, Councillor Smallwood Smith? Yes. Are there any other discussion, any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carry. 14.8, Liquor and Gaming Licensing Policy Review. Page 166. Move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Baker, seconded by Councillor Halls. Move the recommendation, seconded. Yep, seconding you. the recommendation. I'm presuming you're not wishing to speak. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 14.9, Building and Swimming Pool Inspection Policy Revocation on page 179. Councillor Norris, we should yep, move that way. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Halls. Yes, thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I will put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 1410, revocation of the rural road ceiling policy on page 189. Councillor Smith. Move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Smallwood Smith. The final mm -hmm. seconder. Seconded by Councillor Halls. Do you wish thank to speak, you. Councillor Halls? No, thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 1411, Naming of Assets Policy Review on page 213. Moved by Councillor Marsh. Happy to move the committee recommendation. Mm -hmm. So final seconder. Seconded Second by Councillor Baker. Is the anybody else wish to speak on that item? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 1412, Council Assessment Panel Delegations Policy Review and Attachments on page 232. Councillor Halls? Move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillors. The final seconder. Seconded by Councillor Smallwood Smith. Does Councillor Smallwood Smith wish to? No, no comment from Councillor Smallwood Smith. There's no other comments from Councillors. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We then go to item 14.3, Media Policy Review on page 244. Councillor Smith. Move the recommendation. Move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded by? Second. Seconded by Councillor Baker. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We then move on to item 14.14, 2021-2022 dog registration fees. Councillor Baker. Move the recommendation, Mr Chair. Moved by Councillor Baker. Wish to speak on that? No, thank you. No? Seconded by Councillor Crow. I'll second that. Any second the motion? Do you wish to speak? No. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Smallwood Smith. Yes, please. Um, of course, I'm not going to support it. I said I wouldn't last week. But I just want to uh, speak about something. I asked um, uh, Ms Hudson to supply me with a list of uh, dog registrations throughout the city, and I thank her very much for that. Um, on the uh, the back of another email received from her, it uh, talks about the hardship concession, and it says, it is recognised that the introduction of a hardship category would be a proactive approach to further assist and encourage dog owners to register their dogs. The current state-based registration system, DACO, does not allow for hardship registration concession. We would need to work with the Dog and Cat Management Board to achieve a system Oh, I'm not sure what that word is actually, system hang, I think it is meant to be changed, in order to introduce a hardship concession category. And I was just wondering whether the, um, the mover and the seconder would agree to put something like that in there, that we actually um, move forward with this and, and try and, and get. And I, my question then would be, why do we have to go through the Dog and Cat Management Board? Why can't we do it ourselves as to um, looking at hardship uh, uh, concession for people who are really going to be struggling this year uh, to register their dogs. So I have a question and I have an ask of the of the mover and seconder about including something that in their um, motion. Well, before we get to move, adding any or potentially altering or amending, can you just clarify your question just for Ms Hudson of what exactly you want to know? Sorry, what am I? 
your question. Can you just clarify? Can my you question, say your question again? You want me just, to ask my question? Yes. Yep. My question is, why do we have to go through the Dog and Cat Management Board? Why can't we do it ourselves to offer uh, some sort of a concession to those people who are suffering hardship with trying to register their dogs? So that's my question. Thank you. Ms Hudson. We use the Dog and Cat Management Board software in order to process um, dog registrations and they do not have a category of that type on the system. So while we may make a policy decision in that way in order for people to use the online system to pay for their registrations, there needs to be a category to that effect. So that's what we talk about in terms of working with them to make that change. If we implemented a policy that did not include the software change, uh, people could come in, but they would have to come in and manually um, pay their registration and we would have to override that manually for them so they wouldn't be able to pay online. So what you're saying is that we can't, we can't implement any sort of a concession deal for people who are suffering hardships? Um, um, we could, without going through the Dog and Cat Management Board? As a software change. We can make that policy change internally for our council area, but in terms of being able to pay that online, we would have to have effectively a system change to accommodate that. If we were to implement that now just for us, people could get a, a discounted rate, but they would have to physically come in and manually pay at our counters so that we could override that system. They wouldn't be able to pay online. I would like to see that implemented, to be honest with you, because I can't support um, putting the registration up and then not saying that if someone comes in and says, I can't afford to pay my registration, that we're going to say, well, we're sorry, but um, you know, we can't change the policy. It's a dog and cat management thing. I think we're being a little bit hard on those people. And as I said last week, there are going to be so many people who are going to really, really struggle to pay the dog registration, and hence we're going to have more unregistered dogs in the city of Playford. Thank you. Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I, I think that the, the city of Playford um, have done quite reasonable in, in their approach of freezing um, these these fees for some five years, I think. Um, credit to, to this chamber where I think it was through COVID-19, I think the recommendation was that for us to actually increase these fees through COVID-19. It was actually the chamber um, that decided to not proceed with that um, due to the, the hardship time that the economy was actually going going through. I think there's got to be a point in time where we've got to find out if the, the balance sheet isn't, uh, isn't, isn't adding up and there's a bit of red showing in a service that we're, we're providing. There is a need to address um, a small increment in, in this service. What I do like though is that the City of Playford are, are quite reasonable with their um, relief um, that they provide some 50%, 60% up to the way up, all the way up to 100% for assistant dogs on page 265. And credit to the City of Playford further to that, there's another 50% of the applicable fee will be applied to dogs registered from the 1st of January as well. So there's an incredible, incredible discount um, that those who have got veteran cards or are pensioners or uh, that can actually receive what I think we need to do and what um, we, we could do is maybe when uh, their fees do go up that we show some sort of um, proactive and strong advertisement on the concession discounts that are offered to our residents and really get that out um, very clear at, through whatever channels we have available to, to us um, to, to offset the discussion of, a, of an increase. But remember, we're talking about an increase to the, the non-standard fee. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Look, I've got a couple of things to say, I guess, firstly, in response to Councillor Smallwood-Smith um, suggesting the hardship. I mean, I don't think that would need to be something that's implemented into the system because from a hardship point of view, you'd want to have that discussion anyway. So whether that be a phone call or face-to-face, -face, and then obviously an arrangement is made, not a button that you press on a system. Um, the second thing um, is that we keep focusing on it's only a $10 increase, it's only a $10 increase, but we're forgetting like house prices are increasing, which means council rates will increase. There are a lot of different utilities are increasing. So it's not just a $10 fee that impacts on our residents, it's an overall scope of things. So I think we need to take that into consideration because there are still a lot of people out there doing it pretty tough. Councillor Kerrison. Yeah, look, I, I think end of the day, um, 
you know every dollar counts um, it is ten dollars um, and I think if this was running in the red um, obviously I'd be supporting the increase um, last week at the services uh, committee meeting I asked the question all right and the budget is that on the existing fees that we're not going to be in the red that's the that's the projection so just once again I'd like to confirm that that on the existing fees um, at this stage the budget will suggest that we're not in the red mr. green Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Kerrison, can I just confirm you're talking about the overall council budget or the budget for this part of the business? Uh, for this part of the business. I might have to defer to uh, either Ms. Hudson or I'll to answer that one. Um, how the numbers work out depends on how many dogs register and how many dogs are in uh, the council area and how much discount we provide. But based on the modelling, based on the current, we come out about even. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Because if not, Councillor Baker has the right to close the debate if she wishes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, look, I, I appreciate the sentiments that have been uh, that have been expressed. However, I also have to point out that, uh, as Councillor Marsh said, we've had a five-year moratorium on this, and if you have a look at further um, items in this budget today, we are looking at, at absolutely increased expenditure from organisations either with our control or beyond our control. And I really think that the, the $10 fee is not indeed a total $10 fee. There are discounts applied. And, um, and when you talk about a $10 fee per year, discounted by 50%, then discounted a further 50%, I, uh, I seriously think that serious dog owners uh, would not be displaced in, in spending something like $2.50 extra per year to have their pets protected. Thank you, councillors. We've got the motion that is before us in relation to this matter, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? Five, six. Uh, Councillor Tame, I can't, I can't see. Are you voting for or against this motion? Four? Okay, yep. Okay, so the motion is carried. So division? So motion is set aside, um, then we need to uh, rise in your place, but obviously for our system, we need to just put your hands up. So those voting for the motion, could you please raise your hand? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the motion is carried, but keep your hands up for the minute to take us. We've got Councillor Marsh, Councillor Arifi, Councillor Baker, Councillor Gosink, Councillor Onyuzans, Councillor Rentoulis, Councillor Craig, and Councillor Tame. So that motion is carried. We then move on to item 14, 15, the Gawler River Flood Management Authority Draft Business Plan and Budget. Councillor Rantoulis. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, I'd like to move the committee recommendation, please. You wish to speak to that? I don't, no. Councillor Marsh, seconding? No, happy to, uh, to, to support that. And I think we just need to take note that the increase of expenditure will be coming through some continuous savings as well through throughout the budget. So good job by the, um, by the administration. Moved by Councillor Rentoula, seconded by Councillor Marsh. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak on this item? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 14, 16, Community Development and Event Grants 2021. 20, I'll just wait for Councillor Rentoulis. Thank you, Councillor, for your prompt response. Councillor Smallsmith. Move for staff recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Smallsmith. Is it find a seconder? Happy to second that. Seconded by Councillor Onyuz Thank you. Mover and seconder are not wishing to speak on the item. I think we thrashed it out pretty well last week. Okay, yep. thank you, councillors. Anyone wish to speak against the item? If there's no other discussion, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Go to item 14, 17, the ICAC implementation program for April 2021. Councillor Baker. Move the recommendations. 
Moved by Councillor Baker. Does it find a seconder? It's Councillor Onyzan seconding. Thank you. Wish to speak? Uh, no, thank you. Not. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We then move on to item 15.1, the draft 2021-22 annual business plan and budget and long-term financial plan for public consultation and relevant attachments on page 333. Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Move the staff recommendation. Moved by Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Does it find a seconder? Councillor Baker. Second, mate. Second. I'm presuming the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. No. no. Just to say that I think it's an excellent document and I think the uh, all credit to our administration and the chamber working very closely together and uh, they've come up with an excellent plan in my opinion. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Uh, Councillor Gossink. Um, I'd like to say that it's a really well written document too. I, I, I read through it and think it's easy for people to understand and really clear intent so well done too. Thank you, Councillor. If there's no other discussion on the item, then I will put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Division? Division's been called. So if all of those that are voting for the item, if you can please put your hand up. For ease of minute taker, that is everybody but councillor coppins are you still on zoom i believe he's he's not there uh, councillor coppins is not there but all other members are voting yes that's easy for the minute taker we then move on to item 15 2 uh, the lga ogm plainford position paper councillor reefy move this staff recommendation please Thank you, Councillor. Do you speak? No. Find a seconder. Councillor Onyuzans. Happy to second that, Mayor. Do you, Thank wish, you. To, you know, nope. wish to speak? No. Wish to speak. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Just remind all councillors they do need to put their hand up so I can see it. Um, we then move on to item 15.3, Risk Management Fundamental Principles and Risk Appetite Statement. Happy to the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Marsh. Does it find a seconder? Don't all jump in at once. <laughs> Councillor Halls, wish to second? Yes, I'll do that. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, um, then we'll... Does anyone wish to speak on the item? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We then move to item 15.4, budget update report. Councillor Marsh. Yeah, happy to move it. And I've only just got um, one question on page 498. Um, or can I ask a question or you want to wait for it to be... Um, no, 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 right. you can ask it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, in regards to 498, the reserves, um, what it's saying that we're, we could have some 10.5 million sitting there in, um, in an offset account, let's just call it. Um, the open space of 8.3, what's some forecasting for that on some items, the 8.3 million, what are we aiming to, uh, to, to spend that on? Not sure if Mr Green or Ms Greaves would like to take that question. Sorry, just think through the mayor. Can I just clarify your question? Yeah, so on page 498, um, it talks about the open space reserve um, is forecast closure at $8.3 million. Yep. What is some planning on to spend that? Because that's obviously a quantity of, of money sitting sitting there. So I just yep. want to be able to, to explain to them. Okay, so you're talking about the balance that's sitting in the reserve for open space? Yep. So um, obviously that reserve um, accumulates from developer contributions over time. And obviously that's, as we go through the annual business planning process, um, if we identify projects that can be reserve funded, so they are open space, we then use those funds to do that. So in the annual business plan, we have a number of reserve 
funded projects like Fremont Park, for instance, that would come out of that reserve. So anything that goes into the annual business plan that we identify as suitable to come out of that reserve comes out of that reserve. Yeah. No worries, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Moving, does it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Second Baker. Man. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I'll clear that carried. And on the 15 at 5, Corporate Governance Committee update, March, April 2021. Councillor Onyuzans. Happy to move it, um, Councillor Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Onyuzans. Is it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Small Smith. Thank you. If there's no discussion from the mover and seconder, no other discussion from councillors, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. There's nearly informal discussion. We move on to uh, item 17, confidential matters, Northern CBD preliminary development strategy on page 506. So pursuant to section 92 of the Local Government Act 1999, in order to be made that the public be excluded from attendance at the meeting, with the exception of the following, which is on the screen, and this is item under section 93B of the Local Government Act, information of which the disclosure which would one considerably be expected to confer a commercial advantage on a person with whom the council is conducting or proposing to conduct business and or to prejudice the commercial position of the council, and two, would on balance be contrary to the public interest. Does somebody wish to move that way? Moved by Councillor Arifi. Yeah, I'll move that. Thanks. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Baker. Second. Are there any, there's no discussion from mover and seconder. There's no discussion about the motion going into confidence. Then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? 
There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? 
Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254-4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au.
The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? 
we can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254-4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? 
Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We've created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. Or you can choose a voucher and take it to Norma yourself. They'll even lend you a trailer for free. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259 2100. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara.
Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March 2021. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scrap should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as improving your own mental well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. The public. And we just have to wait till uh, the live stream comes back on signed. All right, we are now back into the public item of the meeting. There is no other items on the agenda, so I will close the meeting at 8.44 p.m. Thank you for your attendance. Is it time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid